Welcome, lifers. You found The Shaleen Show with tips, shortcuts, and advice to help you create a crazy, ridiculous, amazing, fun-filled, turbocharged life. And on Fridays, you'll find fast, fit tips to help you lead a healthier life. These are shorter episodes. They're easy to digest, perfect to snack on when you've got 10 minutes or less, and just what you need to keep you on track for the weekends. And today is all about cutting the fat. How to identify those fat-free friendships that deserve more of our time and energy and how to cut the fat from those friendships that are weighing us down now. Welcome to The Shaleen Show. Shaleen is a New York Times bestselling author, celebrity fitness trainer, and obsessed with helping you live your dream life. This show's about friends, and I just want to warn those of you, if, if we end up being BFFs, I have this, I, I just love to play practical jokes, and I'm a total hypocrite, too, because I, I hate it when people play jokes on me, but gosh, I have a good time in amusing myself when I play jokes on other people. I'm the jamster. So one time my girlfriend, Mindy Lawhorn, I let her borrow my, I can't remember why she was in town, but I, I let her borrow my, um, my, my SUV and she went to the store and I had an extra set of keys and I, she was for whatever reason, like very nervous about borrowing it. So I thought, well, this is fun. Let's just go steal it while she's in the grocery store. So, um, I went with another friend and we, we stole the SUV and then we parked strategically. So <laughs> So mean. We parked so we could see her reaction, kind of like, look, you know, that panicked look looking all around the parking lot for my car. And I, oh God, it was so funny. I know that's really mean. I love to laugh. I guess that's the first thing I look for in my friends are people who um, can make me laugh, you know, and, and usually that's someone who can laugh at themselves. Let's define fat free friends. First of all, it has nothing to do, zero to do with what people look like. So I know that sounds kind of superficial at face value, like finding fat-free friends. I'm talking about finding people who are healthy for you. That's how I define fat-free friendship. So if you look at this in terms of fat, you know what I mean? Like if you look at this in terms of how bad consuming too much fat is for you from a health standpoint, I think it's easier to understand how much it can impact your life if you have friends who are bad for you. They're not just bad for your health. They're bad for your future. They're bad for your future relationships. They're bad for your job. They're bad for your energy. And in this quick episode, I'm going to share with you some things that will help you identify friends who are toxic, but more importantly, to really pay attention to those people in your life who are fat-free. They're good for for you. They're healthy and you've got to spend more time with them, around them. And if you don't have those kind of people in your life after this episode, in just a few minutes from now, you will understand how to identify people who are good for you. They improve your health. They improve your future. They make your life better. So how does this quote make you feel? You become like the five people you spend the most time with. Now, does that make you really nervous or does that make you feel proud? Like, does that make you pull your shoulders back and go, cool, I keep some pretty good company? How about this quote by Hans Hansen? People inspire you or they drain you. Choose wisely. And one of my favorite quotes from Oprah, surround yourself only with people who are going to lift you higher. Now, here's the deal with friends. It's this really cool thing that we have called choice. You actually have the ability to decide who your friends are and who you wanna spend time with. We don't have that kind of choice. We don't have that luxury when it comes to our families. We were born into the family we were born into or adopted into or that raised us. We don't always have that choice when it comes to the people who we are surrounded with at work. But we have the choice We have the ability to decide with whom we are going to spend time with and devote energy to. And this is really important because it will affect the way you think, the excuses that you allow yourself to make, and the things that you see as normal. You know, when you are in debt and all of your friends are also in debt, it just seems normal. You don't aspire to do more. I see this all the time in my profession. I will often do test groups where we're developing a new program for infomercial and we will bring in a large, diverse group of individuals who have some weight to lose and they're really motivated to lose the weight. And quite frankly, that's what helps sell fitness programs. It's those before and afters. So we specifically look for people who are going to make this happen. And there's a little bit of profiling that goes into that. 
Because I've been doing this for 25 years, what I see as an important and critical element of somebody losing weight and keeping it off, but what, what, are their, what are their friends and the people that they surround themselves with and their family members? Do, do they all kind of represent people who are unhealthy and whose hobbies surround food and eating and drinking? And because if that's the case, the likelihood of me helping somebody lose weight and keep it off is lower. It's not a possible, but it would take a leader to be able to change the people who they surround themselves with. The ideal candidate for me, someone who I know is going to take that weight off and they're going to make this a lifestyle change. There's somebody who's going to lose the weight and I'm going to run into them five years later and they look even better. The ideal candidate is somebody who is surrounded by healthy people, healthy friends, healthy family members. And that is because the people who we spend the most time with are the people who are influencing our lives, our decisions, how we think, what we expect is a possibility, what we believe we can do, what we believe we deserve. Work to surround yourself with people who who give you energy, who inspire you, people who you admire the way they treat people, people who you admire them because of their integrity, because of their drive, because of of the way they make their priorities so important. Aspire to spend more time with people who have ambition and balance and an approach to life that just feels right. In my mind, the people who I want to aspire to be like have incredible integrity, have happiness, have strong relationships. You notice the one thing I haven't mentioned is money. There are people who happen to have money who I aspire to be like, but it's not because of their financial situation. I want to surround myself with people who do the right thing, who are uncomfortable when they're presented with something that doesn't feel right. One of my favorite all-time quotes from John Wooden is that, and it's related to people who are successful, he says, you need to surround yourself with smart people who will argue with you. Hello, yes, hashtag amen. I love that. I want people in my life who when I'm about to do something that is detrimental to my my priorities or my balance or my family or my health or the lifestyle that I've created, not that they're gonna tell me what to do, but they'll ask me the uncomfortable questions. I want people in my life who are going to say, "So, so why is it you've made that your goal? And they'll question my motives. They'll keep me on track. They will help me make the right decisions because they want the best for me. They see my potential. They want to lift me up. Those are the people who, when good things happen, they legitimately are happy for you. I want people in my life who will push me to be better than they are. Those are the people I want in my life. And I have to aspire to put them in my life by putting that out there. I've got to be that friend. I've got to be that colleague. I've got to be that person so that I can attract that person into my life. I so value the friends who I can I can have those uncomfortable conversations where you, you've just made me really mad and I'm going to be mad at you all day because the questions you asked me made me mad. I don't want opposition. I just want to move forward and do this. And I'm going to accuse you of not supporting me because you've asked me these really awkward questions. And because I'm defensive, I'm going to say, you don't support me. You don't love me. And, and I don't want to talk to this person. And I might even complain to my husband. Those are the people I want in my life because you've made me uncomfortable, because you've triggered something in me. I know that means I've got to give it more thought. And that extra thought is going to save me pain and hardship later. Now, it might just make me think through my my decision a little more so I feel more confident in it. Those are the kind of people you want in your life. People who make you step up and step into your true potential. You have greatness inside of you. Stop investing time with people who are making some of the same excuses that you are. I want you to surround yourself with people who are doing things that make you a little uncomfortable, but you know you could do it too. You know if you had the know-how, you've got the drive and the motivation, and that's all you need. That and some great people in your life make all the difference in the world. I am so lucky to have people like you in my life. And I want you to take this opportunity to forward the link of this podcast to 
to somebody who you want them to know that they are in your life for a reason, that they inspire you, that they are that individual who asks you the difficult questions, who will argue with you when they think you're going down the wrong path. It's just because they love you and you love them for it. Lifers, this week, invest your time with people who make you better. 